Hello everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Um, we're going to work on some side chill in the ES2. We're going to be using the Metaforming Sample Pack, which uh, you can get at GhostWritenClips.com. I'll put the link in the description. And I recorded this video yesterday uh, without any narration, without any speaking, and now we're just going to watch it together. I'm going to explain to you guys what exactly I'm doing. I think this is a good way to do this kind of video for me right now. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to import sample inside the data utility and I'm going to go to the metaforming sample pack and uh, I'm going to go to a folder called chord project files and I'm going to open up blank drums right and this basically is a blank sample pack that is um, only contains two samples which are two samples of 64 drum slices and those are um, chopped or, or 64 yeah 64 drum one hits and, and those those samples are sliced so that I can use them it takes up very little space but it's a good palette of drums so um, that's what I like to start with I'm going to I've been working in 132 um, BPMs lately but for this side chill I'm going to do 111 uh, for some reason when I'm working on side I like to um, use multiples of three I'm just choosing a random name here because um, that's kind of how I do things. And then I think I'm going to work in G minor, right? So I'm noting that in the name GM. Now here I use pad um, shift and pad number four and pad number five to set the scale of the overall project to G minor. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 19 out of 20 in the edit screen and this is poly. I'm going to change, use the part buttons. I'm going to go through and change all of the parts to mono one. That's just my preference. If I need paraffiny in a part that I can change it as I'm working on the fly. The next thing I'm going to do is move, I'm going to write that of course, I'm going to move three ahead to the velocity pad velocity I'm going to turn all those off as well I like everything at full velocity most of the time if I do need some velocity once in a while which I do um, want a human feel then I'll again just go and change those as I need them right I tend to write everything on the ES2 because I never know how um, strange things are going to be like if it's going to actually give me um, a sample freeze when I'm exporting for instance so yeah I write everything okay in this slot here this is where I usually have drums so I'm gonna grab my drum pack <clears throat> full kit and go to the first slice now I'm gonna use copy uh, excuse me shift and uh, go to copy part which is shift and pad 13 and uh, select the part and now I'm just basically doing the, the same um, I, I'm copying the first part to all five of those pads now I'm going to go through and select which one of these slices I want to use the first two are usually bass drums the second two um, which is let's see, 8 and 9 or 9 and 10 are bass drums 11 and 12 are snares and then 13 is a closed hi-hat and Inside. 14 is an open hi-hat. I often go back and, and change these later writing, which you'll see. Good example of the sound of this of these drums in this in this template. It sounds really really good. Save. Now I'm going to go back to the data utility and go back to import sample and I'm going to go to the top layer of my card. Go to the metaforming pack, which we're going to be using, and I'm just going to start loading things, right? I'm going to start loading uh, ARPs, 
Okay, all of my arpeggios in here are recorded at 132 BPMs and it's C minor. So I'm gonna have to uh, do a little bit of finagling to make them unique, number one, just so, that, so I'm not just using a clip of an arpeggio. And uh, also uh, to get them to adhere to the tempo and key changes. And you'll see how I do a little bit of this. It's uh, when you get a sample pack, you know, my, my website's called Ghost Written Clips, and it gives the idea, I think, of, uh, oh, this is a bunch of music that somebody else made that I'm going to call my own. That's not how it works. Uh, you can really, really do a lot of things to a sample pack to, um, to make it your own and to differentiate your music from every other thing made with the pack. Most, if you do it right, nobody will even know that you used uh, one of the packs. Not only that, but this sample pack specifically is full of thousands of, of one shots, one one shot synth notes and, and bass notes and things like that, which I'm loading up now. Unfortunately, with the ES2, unlike on the ES1, you can't just uh, audition these before you load them. So I have to load up a bunch haphazardly. And um, as you'll hear in a minute, some of them are, are just not good. Uh, they don't fit very well with this with this piece that we're, we're gonna be making. And uh, so I'll go back and, and swap them out, right? So I'm gonna throw some pads in there. Everything, all of these are in um, stereo and in mono in this pack. So <clears throat> it makes it good for working in the core samplers if you need mono monophonic stuff in 16-bit. Loading some pads. Now this is the stock art uh, oscillator, sawtooth oscillator. I'm just going to lay down a baseline. Of course there's no side chain, so I'm going to have to uh, duck um, using the sequencer. Now I'm going to go shift to the gate arp and I'm going to turn it down to gate arp 1, which is just a, a 16 16th note staccato. Uh, yep. Okay, now notice I'm in keyboard mode, so it's going to match the scale that I'm working in. These are the different timings. It's not just 16, 16th notes, uh, but it, all the way up it is. Okay, so I'm just going to lay that across the board. All four bars of this pattern. Messing with the, the sound. Okay, I thought I had it in trigger mode so that I could lay down a kick drum, but I was wrong. I was still in keyboard. I got that laid down. What you're going to see is I'm going to go to the sequencer, hit the sequencer button there, and I'm just going to remove the bass lines during those kick drops. So it provides ducking and uh, false, false side chain, fake side chain. <laughs> I also could use the um, the level button for this if I wanted to, or even the filter button for this if I wanted to. Now I'm scrolling through some of the bass stuff that I uh, scrolling through some of the bass sounds that I loaded, and I'm noticing that they are too low, right? That they are not matching the oscillator that I put in. So I'm, I'm using the pitch to adjust them. But what I'm going to end up doing is stopping the sequencer and going into sample edit, and I'm pitch them all up two octaves. So see, I'm messing with the pitch, trying to find a good sweet spot, and it's not working out for me. So I'm going to stop the sequencer. You'll see. Basically, the bass samples that I, I loaded in there uh, were recorded lower than the stock oscillator. Like lower, lower pitch. Two octaves lower. Forty-eight up and forty-eight down is one octave uh, using the pitch knob on the ES2. By the way, here I'm going to the Daddy Utility. 
excuse me, sample edit. And I'm going to in the bases that I put in. I'm going to go four over, I think, yeah, six out of ten. And I'm going to sample them all up, 24. And I'm going to hit right. Of course, you have to um, write these samples. Sweeps of the filter. Turn the speed 
everyone. If you like what you're hearing in this instructional video, then consider buying the pack. The link is in the description. Go to ghostwrittenclips.com. It basically has over five gigabytes of material, including clips, thousands, literally thousands of one-shot synths and basses and drums and effects. It's got ARPs, it's got stems for different movements and tracks, it's got project files for Corgi S2, Corgi SX, Novation Circuit, Akai Force, and of course all of this material can be used in any DAW or sampler. Also, in case you guys didn't know, I'm retiring all the packs that are on there now and I'm moving into a new paradigm. So if there's anything on the site that you want to have, now's the time to get it. Anyway, let's get back into it. At this point, Possibly in um, in triplet. I'm going to change it to 16 out of 16 and sliced it in C minor. So I'm going to need to augment that. <clears throat> There's a benefit to using clips in C minor, and that's that using this. Oh, Here I'm using the shift to add and take away points of the slice. And right. Um, using clips in C minor, you can use the keyboard um, to play slices back and make them fit your key and tempo. I'll show you. When, see, I'm in, in keyboard mode right now. I didn't like the way that last uh, snare comes in, so I adjusted the timing much. I like that better. Right. Shift and mute brings it. Uh, brings it everything. Uh, unmutes everything. By the way. for the same setting. Right here I'm messing with the cutoff, but I think 
think that I'm in the bass line and I'm not. I'm still in the arc. I'll notice in a second.
terrible sound because I'm going back into the data utility, import sample, and I'm going to replace it. All right. I forgot where what it was, so at this point. So I scrolled through, I, I, I do remember actually that it was base 124, and so I'm writing over it right now. I don't know if you... Perhaps at this point I realize that I need to export all samples, something I should have done two or three times before this just to make sure that it was going to work out, but oops, it, uh, yeah, I hadn't done that yet, so luckily it did work out, woohoo! And I'm going to export all patterns as well, just to keep everything that we've been working on. Then he just decided here to um, change some of the drums that I've chosen and mess with them a little bit. We'll see. Could be wrong. Can't really remember what I did at this point. <laughs> you guys and uh we can talk soon <laughs>